Welcome to another episode in my series exploring the Mac Pro 6,1 trash can and how useful it is for a professional user in 2020. Now I know many of you have been waiting for part four in my series and I am still working on that, but what I thought I'd do is slip in a bonus episode for you um, for reasons that will become clear as you watch the video. Now in this bonus episode, I want to explore the upgrade options for the SSD inside the Mac Pro trash can. Now you might want to upgrade the SSD for a couple of reasons. Uh, the main one being capacity, of course. Uh, Apple is not particularly generous when it comes to dishing out hard disk capacity. Uh, when this Mac Pro was new in 2013, it came with just 256 gigabytes of storage. And in modern terms, it's not really enough. It's not really enough for me anyway. I need something a little bit bigger. Uh, interestingly, Apple still thinks 256 gigabytes is the magic number because if you go out and buy a brand new Mac Pro in 2020, the entry level model comes indeed with 256 gigabytes. I'm not sure what planet Apple are on. Actually, I am sure what planet they're on. They're on the planet where you make a whole lot of money out of people upgrading from the base specification. Anyway, that's by the by. With the Mac Pro trash can, you're kind of stuck with just that single drive slot inside. Uh, Apple obviously intended for you to use external storage via Thunderbolt or perhaps USB, but that's not always ideal or convenient. You might want to have a much larger storage capacity inside the computer itself. Another reason to upgrade the SSD in the Mac Pro is for speed. The generation of SSDs that was introduced in 2013 is considerably behind the performance of modern technology. Uh, when I benchmarked the drive, it was scoring somewhere between 750 and 800 megabytes per second, if I recall correctly. Uh, modern SSDs are going much, much faster than that. It's not unusual to see well over 2,000 or even 3,000 megabytes per second. It's useful to remember that the speed difference in SSDs is not always noticeable in everyday computing. In fact, it seems that once you get above sort of five or 600 megabytes per second, it actually becomes very difficult to tell the difference. Now, obviously, if you're doing lots of work that requires transferring files, copying files, ingesting media, that sort of thing, then yes, of course, you're going to see a speed improvement if you put a faster drive in. But I'd hate for people to rush out uh, to go and get one of these expensive faster drives when in actual fact they may not see a performance benefit for it. Naturally, though, if like me, you want to increase the capacity of the drive in the Mac Pro, then you might as well get something that's faster at the same time. From the research I've done, it seems like there are really three options for upgrading the SSD, and I'm going to start with the most left field of those, and that's the Amphiltech Angel Shark Carrier Board. Uh, this was recommended in a comment uh, from Neil Parfit. Uh, he says this is a good solution and it allows a speed increase, uh, but what it also does is it allows you to reuse your original Apple SSD, as well as installing two additional M.2 SSDs. Now that massively increases the storage capacity inside your Mac Pro trash can. Now I will just say Neil's channel is well worth a look and I've put a link in the description for that. Uh, Neil's an audio engineer and was previously using two of these Mac Pro trash cans. Um, he's just recently upgraded to the new Mac Pro, the rack mounted version, and he's made some videos about the fun and games he's had installing uh, that computer. So well worth checking out that channel. Now the Amphiltech Angel Shark isn't for me because of the price. Uh, here in the UK, the cheapest I could find it was about £800, and that's before you've added any SSD drives. That's a really significant investment in a computer of this age at this point in time that doesn't make sense for my usage, but it might make sense for your usage. Or you might be able to find one of these uh, boards secondhand on eBay. It may become cheap enough. It may be a good value and a good option for you. Another option would be an NVMe drive. The Mac Pro has Apple's proprietary SSD connector, but for $20 or even less, you can buy an adapter that will allow you to install a standard M.2 drive into your Mac Pro trash can. So the third option is to buy a genuine Apple SSD. Now the type that's in the Mac Pro is compatible with the type that uh, comes in the MacBook Pro, for example. So there's no shortage of these available on eBay. Now the original SSD that came with the Mac Pro is a generation three drive. Um, since then, there are generation four and I think also generation five drives, which can be used in the Mac Pro. Uh, and if you go for one of these later generation drives, it's going to run at a faster speed. So this for me is the ideal solution. I want to go up to about 512 gigabytes in capacity. If it's a bit faster, that's great, but I want it to be an original Apple part because I want to hold the resale value of the machine. 
and I fully appreciate that this is not the cheapest solution. I scoured around on eBay and I got a 512 gigabyte SSD, a generation four model for 179 pounds. And I possibly paid a little bit over the odds there, but as I'm using this for business, I bought through my business from a trader who was uh, gonna give me a VAT receipt so that I could reclaim the sales tax. So the actual cost to me is a bit less. Installing a new SSD is really quite simple. And whilst uh, I'm gonna show you the process for the genuine Apple SSD, of course, it will be the same for the NVMe drive. You just gotta fit the adapter as well. Very straightforward. Uh, but a little bit of planning ahead of time is useful. Now remember, if you're using NVMe drive, you can't do the command R on boot to do a restore and a fresh install. You could do that if you were installing a genuine Apple SSD, of course. Uh, but for most people, what they'll wanna do is copy their existing system to the new drive. And a great way to do that is with the software application Carbon Copy Cloner. Now this is a really great application. It doesn't cost a fortune, so I do recommend getting yourself a copy of that. Um, if you don't think you're likely to use it though, they do give you a free trial, uh, which is fully functional for the purposes of doing a single backup for installing an SSD. So you'll need an external drive, ideally an SSD drive. Uh, viewers who are familiar with the channel will know that I like the Samsung T5 drive, so that's what I use. Plugged one of those in, started up Carbon Copy Cloner, and made a bootable copy of my internal drive. Once we've done that, we can shut the computer down and get to the physical hardware change. It's very simple, just take the cover off of the Mac Pro. You'll find the SSD is mounted onto one of the graphics cards, and it has this black heat sink on it. Just unscrew the screw that retains it, and you can gently remove it from the computer. Putting the new card in is as simple as slotting it into the slot and screwing it back in. Then you can put the cover back on. However, in my case, what you'll notice is that the SSD that got removed from the Mac Pro has this heat sink on it, and it's part of the unit. I've tried removing it, but it's obvious that doing so is going to break the SSD, and I don't want to do that. Now, the SSD that I bought came from a MacBook Pro, and it doesn't have a heat sink on it. Uh, I figured it probably would make sense to make sure it does have a heat sink and better safe than sorry. So I purchased this simple aluminium heat sink. It was less than $10, uh, very simple to install. You just peel the label off the back and stick it straight onto the SSD. Uh, and that just gives me a little peace of mind. Once we've closed everything back up, we can then uh, insert our external drive that we copied our system onto. And then we boot up the computer whilst holding down the option key on the keyboard. That will then bring up a menu where we can choose which uh, disk we want to boot from. So we just choose the external disk and we boot into our operating system. Uh, then we use Carbon Copy Cloner again to copy from the external SSD back to the internal SSD and make it bootable. Once you've done that process, you simply shut down your Mac Pro, remove that external drive and start it up again. And hey presto, your Mac Pro has been upgraded. So I've gone from 256 gigabytes to 512 gigabytes. The whole process took me less than half an hour, including cloning my disk. It was really easy to do, and I'm very happy with the result. Now, obviously, I've got the additional capacity, but what's the performance like? Let's do a quick run in Blackmagic disk speed test. And as usual, we'll do a five gigabyte stress test, and we'll run it three times and take the average of three passes. So a pretty fantastic result. We're getting just over 1300 megabytes per second on write performance and just over 1400 megabytes per second on read performance. And that's almost double the SSD that we've replaced in the Mac Pro. So we've got our capacity increase, we've got a performance increase, and we've still got our original Apple functionality. So for me, upgrading with a generation four genuine Apple SSD was a great solution. Now, just out of curiosity, I ran the Geekbench 5 CPU benchmark again. I was interested to see whether a faster hard disk would actually make a difference to the Geekbench score. And indeed it does. If you'll recall previously, my Mac Pro was scoring 7,444 on multi-core, and we're now up to 7,625. If we look at the benchmark charts for Geekbench 5 and have a look at the Mac League table, then that score places my old Mac Pro just about 400 points behind the new entry-level Mac Pro, the 2019 model. Um, so I'm pretty pleased to see that result. Uh, now, as I said at the outset, I am still working on part four of this series where I'm assessing the real-world performance of the Mac Pro. Uh, but since I did this upgrade prior to starting that process, I felt I needed to slip in this bonus episode by way of full disclosure. 
Uh, episode four is coming, I'm still working on that, along with another bonus episode that I think you might find interesting involving some external GPU action. So if you're not already subscribed to the channel, please uh, subscribe, hit the bell to be notified when future episodes come out. Hopefully I've done enough to earn a thumbs up, and in any case, I'll see you next time for some more Geek